Hello, everyone. Uh, this is my presentation. I hope by the end of it, you know, you feel a little bit more enlightened about the topic that I bring up. So let's get into it. <clears throat> so I can't stand racists. I can't stand Nazis. I can't stand KKK members, Trumpers, members of the Black Lives Matter movement. Yeah, they, like there's no way that God works through these type of people. They're just like, they're the wrong people to be associated with God, right? Now, before you be like, hey, get this guy out of here. I'm not, I ain't trying to hear nothing you got to say after this. Look, of course, I'm horribly wrong, right? God can use anyone. Yes, even those categories of people that I just said. Don't believe me? Y'all don't believe me? All right. So we're going we're gonna to talk about a few instances where he did just that. So let's talk about it. So if you guys got your Bible with you, you know, you want to open your Bibles up to John uh, chapter 4, verse 7. All right, so <clears throat> it's when Jesus uh, first came in uh, Samaria. And in 4 7, John 4 uh, 7, he came into Samaria and he was like, he saw a woman, a Samaritan woman, uh, who was drawing water. And he said, Hey, can you get me something to drink? So, John uh, uh, chapter 4, verse 7 says, A Samaritan woman came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The, Sar the Samaritan woman was like, you're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. They do not get along, if you haven't figured that out. How can you ask me for a drink? Because as it says, Jews don't associate with Samaritans and the Samaritans. <clears throat> Jesus said, if you knew the gift of God, who it is, if Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. So obviously I'm not going to read the whole story, but Jesus went to talk to the Samaritan woman. And you know, we talk about how, you know, Jesus can, you know, God and Jesus, they can use anyone to spread the gospel or, or to, to, they can use anyone to talk for them to talk about how good God is. So Jesus is something that most people probably wouldn't have done right off the top. Right. So Jesus calls out in John chapter, in chapter four, verse 17, <laughs> well, we'll start at 16. So he told her, go call your husband and come back. The woman said, I have no husband. This is where Jesus calls her out. Calls her out. He said, yeah, you're right. And when you say you have no husband, the fact is you have five husbands. And the man you now have is not your husband. What you just said is quite true. So most people, you call them out like that. Like, Dude, who, who, you, who you think you are, brother? Don't be coming at me. And you know what I'm saying? And so... The woman was obviously shocked, like, no, how do you know? You just met me. How do you know this about me? She said, sir, in verse 19, says, sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worship on the mount, on these mountains. But you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is Jerusalem. <laughs> right? So it goes further on, right? And <clears throat> the biggest thing is it happens in verse 25, the woman said, I know the Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Jesus declared, I, <clears throat> the one you're speaking to you, I am he. So going on to the rest of the story, this woman, she went and told everybody in town about the Messiah because there's no way that he would have known all these things about her. It's like, you just met me. There's no way that you would know any of these things about me already. So she went and, and said, hey, look, in verse 29, she went into town and said, hey, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came into town and made their way towards him. Now, imagine if you were these people coming and this woman is like, look, she got five wives and the dude she's living with isn't even her husband. So right off the top is like, mm, you know, you, she's probably not that high up on the social ladder in that town. They're probably like, yeah, OK, you know, you whatever but we're gonna go see you know who this guy is <clears throat> you talking about he told him everything about you we're gonna go we're gonna see so moving on uh in <clears throat> verse 39 said many of the samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony he told me everything i did so when the samaritans came to him they urged him to stay with him he stayed two days and because of his words many more became believers here's the important part they said to the woman we know 
we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man really is the savior of the world. Now imagine that plan. At first, it just looked like Jesus was coming through. Just be like, hey, you wrong. You live wrong. You have five husbands and the dude you live with ain't even your husband. Imagine <laughs> it's like, so what did you come here for? Just to tell me about myself and tell me, hey, you're doing wrong. Like, hey, shame on you. And in reality, there was a big plan, right? Jesus told him that, told her that. And in reality, he used her to go and spread the message that he is here, that the Messiah is here. Something so simple as looking like I'm calling you out and telling you you wrong for having these husbands and living in sin with somebody who's not your husband, right? At first, it, you know, it looked like that. And in reality, they used her to, to go ahead and spread the gospel. Hey, the Messiah is here, right? So that's just a little something for you. You know, now you got the gist of things of what I'm saying. We can use anyone. So we know a little bit of an idea of how can you, he can use anyone, as you guys just saw, just listen to. So let's take a look at, you know, the book of Acts. You know, someone who I believe that was used by God in one of the greatest ways in the Bible. It's trippy. You, you, it, it really is. So we're going we're gonna to get into meat and potatoes of that. All right. So as I said, you know, every person can use a, can be used by God. Right. <clears throat> Some of us may happen to know of a man in the Bible called Paul. Right. Well, do you, you know his name used to be called Saul? Yes, his name used to be called Saul. So in Acts, we're going to flip on over to Acts. This is Acts 26. It'll be Acts 26, uh, verse 5. In Acts 26, verse 5, <clears throat> you will see it says Saul is out there and he's like, hey, you guys know who I am. Acts 26, 5, he was self-proclaimed to come from the strictest sect of his religion, living as a Pharisee. So he was Jewish, right? And so if what you don't know about Pharisees, they were like, you know, the top of the food chain in the Jewish community. So they were like the godfathers of the Jewish community, right? And he's like, look, <clears throat> Saul went up and was like, look, these guys know who I am. The Jewish people know him. They know that I'm at I, I'm so strict with our religion that I'm known as a Pharisee. So I don't really need to, you know, say anything. Y'all know who I am. So now there's a there's a reason why he was talking and the person he was talking to, right? So Saul was Saul was known because back in Acts chapter eight, there's just one sentence. There's one sentence in Acts chapter eight that Saul was about. It, Acts chapter 8 actually starts by saying Saul approved of them killing him. That is when a man by the name of Stephen, who's believed to be the first Christian that was martyred. Right? He's believed or is said to be the first Christian that was martyred. And these people dragged him out. And when they dragged him out to stone him for spreading the gospel of Christ, Saul was there. Right? Saul was there. He's, they drug him out. And he saw the gates open up, the gates of heaven open up. And he saw Jesus right there. And he said, hey, I can see Jesus. And they killed the man. And Saul was there. And he said, yeah, it's good. He approved of them killing him solely because he was a follower of Jesus. Isn't that something? That <laughs> it was like, so look, my point is, look, you're going to about to see how every person can be used by God, even if they've done some evil works like Saul, like I said, Saul was, he was something else. So moving on, we can all start off in the worst of ways, right? For, for Jesus to use us. We can all start in the worst of ways. So if we skip on over to Acts 9, um, <clears throat> verse 1 through 2, we we'll go ahead and read this. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. So Saul didn't like people who was following Jesus. Right. He didn't like Christians. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to synagogues in Damascus. So that if he found anybody there who belonged to the way, which is Christ, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. Now, let's keep that in mind. So he was on his way to imprison folks. Now, he was on his way to imprison uh, Christians because he's like, no, that that's not the way. I don't believe in this Messiah. 
or anything like that. And anybody who follows him got to go to jail. So he went to uh, the high priest. And clearly, you got to be sitting here thinking, if you were a high priest at that time, you know, it was just like, all right, so now granted, nobody knows what the high priest was thinking. But, you know, I could imagine the high priest was like, all right, brother, this is, hey, you doing your thing? Fine. Here you go. You can go in and imprison these folks. Cool. So Saul is on his way to Damascus. So <laughs> imagine a follower of God being put to jail or headed to be going to jail because he's following his son, the father's son. Now, it, it, that's crazy to even think about right now, right? But it's what was happening. The high priest didn't stop him. There was no resistance. So we're going to look <laughs> when God is calling, you know, he has a way of making us listen. As this, this, that, that is true. He has a way of making you listen. You can be like, nah, whatever, whatever. But God always has a way of making you listen. So moving on over to Acts 9, verse 3 through 9. This is the good stuff. So Saul, so as he neared the Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard, heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Now, just imagine this. You traveling on the road. Like, I'm going to put these Christians in jail. They going down, bro. We ain't, we ain't following no Jesus. That's not happening. And then you get blasted off of your horse with this light. And Saul is like, who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, who you, who you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go to this city, and you will, do, you will be told what you must do. <laughs> Now, Paul had, excuse me, Saul at the time had some men traveling with him, right? The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound but didn't see anyone. Imagine that. You are literally knocked off your horse talking like, oh, Lord, what? And the people with you are like, uh, uh, hey, bro, uh, hey, look, we're just going <laughs> to, in these days, it's like, we're just going to put this little jacket on you. Don't worry. Everything's going to be okay, right? No. Saul was sitting there. He's the only one that saw this light. And Jesus talked to him, right? He was, he was, he got checked by Jesus pretty well in, the, in that one. Like, so he thought he, so Saul thought he was the top dog until he met the top dog. And then he realized he was a puppy. And that, that's really what, what happened. So he was humble before God in an amazing way, right? So <clears throat> Jesus told him, hey, get up, go in the city. You'll be told what to do. The guys with him was like, uh, what's going on? So Saul got up from the ground in, in verse 8. Saul got up from the ground. When he opened his eye, he couldn't see nothing. He was blind. He was blind. So they, so the people he was with led him <clears throat> by hand, by the hand, into Damascus. And for three days, he was blind. and did not eat or drink anything. Can you imagine that? Like, I'm on my way. Hey, these Christians finna get it. Uh, these, these Christians finna get it. None it is, it is, If it's not God, we ain't trying to hear it. This whole following this dude, Jesus, no, ain't trying to hear it. Next thing you know, you get knocked off a horse, and that very <clears throat> individual that you like, no, he's not He's not the son of God, is looking dead at you from the sky. <laughs> Saying, hey, yeah, but it's time. So he blinded him. For Saul didn't eat for three days. He didn't eat, excuse me, for three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. So... This is pretty good, right? That's that's pretty crazy because it's just like, wait, okay, he was blind and like, okay, he was the only one that could see him. So this is where we introduce a person by the name of Ananias, right? So this is where it gets really good, right? So in Damascus, in verse 10, in Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. Check this out. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. So get this. This is what we talk about. God can use anybody. Right. So let's let's follow up in this story. How God can use anybody. And it's going to make sense soon. Right. So Saul originally was on his way to put Christians in jail, to put followers of Jesus in jail. So clearly, Saul didn't believe in Jesus at all. He was Jewish. He believed in God. But no, nah, I don't know who this son of God you guys are talking about. He's not the Messiah. Matter of fact, 
so bad, I believe it, that you guys are wrong. I'm going to put y'all in jail for even following this guy. On his way, he's blinded, and he sees the guy that he don't believe in looking at him through the crowd, through the clouds. What you trying to do, bro? Like, uh, where you headed? Hey, why are you persecuting me? Act like I don't exist. And he's like, who are you? I am Jesus. <laughs> the one that you say is not, is don't, don't exist. So, and he gets blinded. So in why he's blinded, you know, God goes and talks to another guy because he has a plan in motion, right? We talk about how God can use anybody. So Saul is blind, and God gives him visions of a man named Ananias. At the same time, he goes to Ananias and says, hey, I need you to go talk to this guy, Saul. He's blind. And uh, he's had he gave Saul dreams or visions of this man named Ananias. So God is like, hey, I gave him a vision of you, so you need to go put hands on him. And it gets even more interesting, right? So in verse 13, he says, Lord, Ananias answered, I've heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. So Ananias heard about Saul. He's like, hey, this guy is known for putting our folks in jail. Like, it's, Lord, I mean, no disrespect, Lord. And I'm just saying, like, you do know this guy is known for putting us in jail. Right? right? And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. So keep that in mind. So the Lord went to say, Ananias, go do this. And he's like, uh, Lord, um, you, you know this guy, he coming to arrest people. He may arrest me. You know, Ananias probably was thinking, hey, he may be arresting, going to arrest me if I go do this. And this, to show the power of God and how he can use people, this next verse, right? Chapter 15. But the Lord said to Ananias, go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. So <laughs> these next words, I like to call some of the most gangster words I ever heard. He said, I will show him how much he must suffer in my name. Boom. So we talk about how God can use people, right? And we all know, you know, even the things that are happening in the world. You mentioned things like Jesus, God, those names come up in the conversation. It can be some some reason immediately make people uncomfortable or they like, nah, nah, you know, I don't talk about that. You know, religion and politics, I don't talk about. OK, but that doesn't mean that you're wrong. Right. That doesn't mean we're wrong. This, But when God is saying here, I'm going to show him how much he must suffer in my name to this day. That same thing is happening. You have to suffer in God's name. Meaning you bring up God in a conversation, nobody wants to talk to you. Typically, people shy away from it or it's they ain't trying to hear this. You're wrong. God doesn't exist. So on and so forth. Right. It, it is to know God is to suffer in his name. That's the way it is that the people have. So Ananias is like. All right, Lord, if that's that's what you want to do, you know, not to go too much further into the story. But Ananias, <clears throat> he went to the house. And laid hands on on Saul. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you this part. He said, and Ananias went to the house. This is verse 17. Went to the house, entered it, placed his hands on Saul, said, Brother, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here sent me that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. And he got up and was baptized. <laughs> that. He got up and was baptized. I'm, look, the man was on his way to persecute the people who follow Jesus. And Jesus came to him, blinded him, and was like, look, no, I'm tired of this. And we talk about how he can use anybody, right? And Ananias is chilling. He's chilling in his home. And, and God comes to him, look, I need you to go see Saul. I gave him visions about you. And even Ananias is like, uh, this man, hold on now. I mean, but at the same time, who's going to deny God? It's like, all right, you know, I'm, I'm trusting you. I'm going to head over there. And he said, Jesus sent me. You know what I'm saying? The man that you saw on the road sent me over here to give you your sight back. Right? And laid his hands on it. And it was like scales. The Bible says in verse 18, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes. And he could see again. Right? Something like scales on a fish. I mean, <laughs> it called me crazy. Was Jesus a favorite food? Hey, just saying. So scales came off of it. Something like scale came off him so he could see. 
and he was immediately baptized, right? So we, we talk about that, how he can use anybody. Why is that important? Well, it's important because <laughs> this was so miraculous that Saul changed his name to Paul. <laughs> changed his entire name. So he changed his name from Saul to Paul, right? That's later on in the story. But Saul, people knew who Saul was. He didn't want to be Saul no more. He was going to go by Paul, right? And there's more to that, but, you know, I'm not going to get into that, but there, there's more to that. But he changed his name to Paul. And Paul ended up becoming one of the most influential people in the Bible. So much so that in Acts, two-thirds of the book of Acts that we were just reading from is about Paul. Yeah, just keep that in mind. It's, it's about Paul. Paul was, as, as, God, as God said, I'm going to show him what it's like to suffer in my name. There are so many stories of Paul getting beat up, Paul getting jailed. And there were so many things that were happening to Paul. But we talk about how God, you know, can use people. So we look at that and let's say, all right, look, that was in biblical times, right? That's, that's back, you know, that's back when Jesus and all that other stuff was going on. Like, I mean, what if that stuff don't happen anymore? Well, I'm glad you say that. So I think this is just about biblical time when he uses people. I'm glad you say that. So anybody know who Denzel Washington is? I mean, I know you know Denzel Oscar the nominee. You know his famous great phrase, my man. You know, you know, you know everybody know who Denzel Washington is. You know he's a devout Christian. He's a devout Christian. He's he's known for building us up, building others up. And he has no problem talking about his Christian faith and giving glory to God. Talking about building people up. And instead of he he actually, true story, he actually does not like to direct. He doesn't really direct movies. Because he's about building others up. And he's about showing that example, right? Showing that example. Because the living for God is, is about more than just spreading the gospel, right? There's, a, there's another commandment in there, right? Which we'll, we're going to get into that too here in a second. We'll touch on that. So, Kanye West. All right, now before everybody's like, uh, you mean the dude that says all this stuff about Jewish people and you know, it kind of got all this stuff going on, so on and so forth. Yes, I'm talking about Kanye West, the man that made a record, who's known as a rapper. Let's keep in mind, he made a song called Jesus Walks, talking about how Jesus walks with him all the time. He made an entire album dedicated to Jesus. And he started a new church, started a church, has his own choir and everything that was traveling with him when he was making the album. He has a song called Go Easy On Me. Jesus, go easy, easy on me. Lord, go easy on me. So, look, yeah, he's done some crazy stuff. But at the same time, we talk about how God uses anybody, right? God can use anyone. Let's keep in mind, Mark was a tax collector, right? He was not liked by his people. <laughs> he was helping collect taxes. And yet, he was a follower of Jesus, right? Jesus hung around with these Thieves, he he healed the sick, hung with people that are the considered the low part of society. Like, why are you hanging with them folks? No, 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 the sick, no, mm -mm. we don't hang with them. And Jesus gladly hung with those folks. Can use anybody. Taking it a step further, you guys ever heard of Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe? It's one of my favorite books, actually. So author C.S. Lewis is the person who made The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And when I watched it, you know, I always thought to myself, the line, when I read the book and I watched the movie, I was like, man, this looks a lot like the story of, of Christ. Come to find out, it is literally kind of a comparison to the story of Christ. But it's made by this Christian author, C.S. Lewis, to have young people give young people a better understanding of Jesus, of the story of Jesus. So we talk, like I said, God can use anybody, right? Okay, he may not be saying, hey, this is in the Bible, so on and so forth. But he's still spreading that message of who God is. Because nowadays, you know, we have to reach people in different ways. We can't say the same things that were said, you know, back in biblical times. You know, people we spread the same message, but change approach, right? So <clears throat> also, one that just happened over the past week, Daddy Yankee. I know that song, something, something, gasolina. I don't, I don't know the words. It's in a different language, but I know gasolina. 
Uh, he made that song. He he wrote that song. He, he raps it. He's a Hispanic rapper. And then had another song called Despacito, right? But Daddy Yankee just recently announced his retirement from rap uh, because he wants to pursue uh, Jesus Christ. He wants to give his, over, his life over to Jesus. He wants to, uh, excuse me, go full Christian with it. And, of course, a lot of people laughed at it because, remember, you have to suffer in my name. But it goes in with God can use anyone, right? It goes with God can use anyone. It doesn't matter who you are, right? Because the first thing that you see rappers and, you know, uh, movie stars, when they go up and they accept the award, what's the, who the first person they give thanks to? First of all, I just want to thank God, right? So his name is there. He can use anybody. His name is mentioned consistently right he can use anybody now if if all those names that you're just like okay those are rappers those are you know the movie stars and so on and so forth what and th those guys okay well how about i use myself okay you still don't believe that he can use you just know this so i recently retired you know out of the the air force 22 years right and no, I wasn't thinking about, you know, Jesus. I'm just being honest. I wasn't and I didn't open my Bible up hardly at all while I was in in the military whatsoever. Didn't go to church, none of that stuff. And here I am doing a report on <laughs> on how God can use people. Going toward a Christian school, getting my degree in theology and religion. And I couldn't be happier to fulfill this. Because we talk about how God can use people, and he, he really can. Because when you look at things, and when you start getting involved in that, and you'll want to be used. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. You will want to be used. So, so let's just reiterate a few things, right? We talk about how God can use anybody. You know, we talked about Saul, who is now Paul, right? Uh, you know, Saul was on his way to persecute Christians. He was like, no, 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 if it ain't God... It ain't right. We don't do this. So we don't do this Jesus mess. And Jesus appeared to Saul and was like, look, um, you trying to persecute me. I don't appreciate that. So I'm going to tell you what. Uh, you, uh, you're going to go blind for a few days. And he reached out to a random guy, Ananias, and said, go over there and, and holler at Paul. You know, bat, and, you know, put your hands on him and heal him. And when that happened, like we said, the scales, the something like scales came off his eyes, right? And he could see, and immediately he was baptized. Now imagine that. He was like, look, I, I'm sorry. He immediately, immediately was baptized, right? And we, we also talked about when that light happened, you know, the people with him was like, mm, bro, I don't know what's going on with you. Because, see, we talk about how God can use you, right? How God can use you. And he also said he's going to know what it's like to suffer in my name. He had already started to suffering because the people with him looked at him like, there's nobody there, bro. You were talking to the air, right? They're looking at him like, eh, the salt, the, eh, eh. but that's what happens today. You keep talking regardless. God can use you and he's going to take care of you. So we also talked about um, how he got checked by Jesus pretty good, right? Saul got checked. He thought he was a big dog. Realize he won. And then we also talked about a few people who God has used, right? It's not always about, you know, s spreading the, the, the word. You know, other there are other ways that you can get out being used by God, right? Getting the message about him out. So, and one fun fact about Paul. I told you two-thirds of the book of Acts is about Paul. Something else you need to know. Paul went on to what most people now know, or most people will say now, Paul went on to write 13 books of the Bible. This is a man who was not a believer in Jesus, did not believe that, that people should follow Jesus. And Jesus used him. Jesus used him, and Paul is responsible for 13 books in the Bible that you read today. Just keep that in mind. This is a man that was like, nah, persecuting all Christians. And now he's responsible for 13 books of the Bible, right? So <laughs> I want to go ahead and tell you how you can apply this stuff. It's very easy. So if you look at John 13, uh, verse 34 through 35, right? 
This is what it says in John 13, verse 34 to 35. I really love this verse. It's Jesus. He says, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. So there's so much to unpack in this commandment that he gives, this new commandment that he gives. Allow yourself to be used. Be used. God loves us all. He loves us all. Listen to that voice you hear that tells you about the Bible and the right and wrong. People label the conscience. Well, let me tell you something else. We all hear it. We just have to pay attention to, to that voice. Pay attention to that voice that's telling you, hey, these are the things that you need to be doing. Right? You choose to ignore them, that's on you. But his greatest commandment is love. And one of the greatest things that he shows, ways he shows his love is, is using you and showing you, hey, go out there, spread the message, using you as an instrument. So that's just something that, you know, it just, it just resonates with me. And I hope it resonated with you. I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, this, this lesson. So if you will, you know, it's going to say a little prayer uh, to, to I'll go ahead and close the lesson out. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we just ask that you give us all strength. Lord, we, we ask that you fill us with the Holy Spirit, Lord. We ask that you come into our hearts. We ask that you give us the words. We ask that you give us the means to spread the message about you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we know that society has changed. We know that. But we know through you all things are possible. So there is nothing to fear about those who will hear us, who will want to hear us, who won't want to hear us. But Heavenly Father, we know that you are here. And Lord, we love you and we thank you and we thank you for this lesson. And Lord, we ask you these things. We pray for strength. We pray for knowledge. And Lord, we just thank you. We ask you these things in your name, Heavenly Father. Amen. Guys, that's all. That's it for me. I hope you've enjoyed the lesson as much as I've enjoyed giving it to you. Um, I hope you're able to apply some of the things that I, I talked about. So thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for listening. I appreciate it.